Hi, everyone. We will get started in about five minutes. Hi everyone, hello and welcome. We will get started in just about three minutes, give people a chance to come on and join us. So about three minutes, folks. All righty. Hello, everyone. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us today. 
We are going to talk about beyond the e-signature today and accelerating time to revenue and mitigate contract risk. With that, I am your host and I will be your cruise director for today, if that's all right with you guys. I am Lauren Dunn. I am the Senior Salesforce Advocate here at DocuSign for Developer Programs. I am here today with our Salesforce expert, Ernesto Carrera. Uh, lead solution architect with us. So we're so excited to have you here, Ernesto. Thank you so much for coming and willing to share all your knowledge with us today. Thank you, Lauren. Definitely appreciate the intro. Um, happy to be on the call, on the webinar today and, and uh, provide some of the uh, information I will provide and, and walk the team through what we have prepared. Awesome. I can't wait to learn from you. Um, with that, we also have another person on the call with us. Melissa is here. She is my right hand girl. She keeps us honest. She keeps us running. She makes sure everything is up and running in the background. So Melissa, over to you for some housekeeping. Hey, thanks so much, Lauren. And good morning, everyone. As mentioned in chat, you are placed in listen only mode. If you have questions, please use the Q&A button to ask questions as they occur to you. And we'll answer via the Q&A box or let you know we'll answer them live. Um, right click is also your friends. To save your questions and answers, simply right click on them and save to your desktop um, or document. And lastly, you should see a quick poll on your screen in just a moment. If you can answer those questions, that will help us understand where you are in your development journey and enable us to customize content for this and future webinars. And with that, I'll launch the poll and turn it over to you, Ernesto. Okay, awesome. awesome. Uh, hi, everyone. So this is Ernesto. Um, before we get started, and I know some of you are filling out that poll, so I'll uh, purposely take a little longer here. But before we get started, I just want to uh, provide our safe harbor statement, just because we may be talking about some forward-looking technology, we may make some forward-looking statements, and of course, we encourage you all to uh, make any purchases or any future purchases based on available technology um, or generally available technology. So, we'll click with that. Okay, um, and going into our agenda. So, this is uh, what we're going to be speaking to today. Um, we're going to step through uh, an intro to DocuSign CLM. Uh, we're going to follow that with a quick step through of an actual demo. I, I prepared a demonstration that will both cover um, the actual uh, end user journey, as well as some of our administrative capabilities, um, some more developer focused content as well along the way. So you, you'll see both sides of our technology as we step through all of this. And then after that, we'll actually step into the QA, right? And so the QA will allow all of you to ask us questions. We, you know, we anticipate there'll be questions along the way as we step through the actual demonstration. Um, and so we will be looking at those, but at the end, we will have a dedicated, dedicated section to actually uh, answer some of those questions and provide some live feedback. So we're, we're really excited for our session this morning. We're happy to have such a great audience um, and uh, we'll, we'll get right into it. Ernesto, can I quickly jump in here? Yes. So I have five swag packs to give away to anyone who asks a question. The first five people to ask a question gets a swag pack. So uh, feel free to throw it in throughout the, the, the presentation and we will ask your question as Melissa has said, either live or we will respond back to you on a message here. So that's me. Awesome, that sounds super exciting. So definitely also encourage everyone to uh, ask a question. I love swag, I'm sure y'all do. So uh, definitely encourage you to uh, actively participate in our session today. Um, okay, so let's dive right in um, to our presentation. So before we go any further, um, some of you may have seen this slide before in some of our other sessions, but I just, I like to use it for level setting for those that have it. Um, so as you know, you know, DocuSign um, has been known for years as the premier e-signature uh, provider. Um, and, you know, it, we have complete command and control of that set of functionality. But as we look through um, what our customers wanted, we have expanded over the years to incorporate what we call prepare, sign, act, and manage, which just really means that we want to allow our customers to be able to create and generate agreements using DocuSign technology. And then after signature, actually be able to manage those agreements and act on them as they 
they mature or as they move through their life cycle. A simple sales agreement, right? There might be obligations there that you need to meet post signature. So, you know, being a technology that can handle all of that, um, that entire journey for our customers, um, this is our vision um, as we move forward. And so speaking of the vision, it's not just the vision, right? We are actively working across those different uh, sets of functionality, whether it's, uh, as you'll see today, DocuSign CLM being an integral part of our strategy and giving our customers the ability to generate agreements, to, to sign them, to act on and manage them, um, but also fleshing out some of the things like integration. So today we'll focus on the Salesforce integration um, very specifically. Uh, but as we look forward, we're also looking at very interesting things like artificial intelligence and how that works with our agreements. And I say look forward, but we have existing GA technology like DocuSign Analyzer that lets you automatically extract content from agreements, risk score them using artificial intelligence. And so with a sales agreement, for example, you may generate some on, on templates, um, but you uh, some of our customers also have to intake them from third parties. So using some of our automated automation technology to allow that to happen is a key uh, part of our overall product suite. We won't concentrate too much on that today. The highlight will be DocuSign CLM, but we will speak to some of those elements as we step through. And again, building up all the traditional elements that you know DocuSign for, whether it's APIs, automation through workflows and interesting administrative capabilities, um, that, is, that is core to what we showed today. All right, so DocuSign CLM for Salesforce, right? How does it work? Um, this is actually a screenshot of DocuSign CLM itself. So it's again, more of a level setting exercise. Our demo today uh, will be um, entirely in Salesforce. Um, and then we'll show a little bit of the admin behind the scenes. Um, but we wanna just, again, uh, un provide some information on what DocuSign CLM actually is. And CLM actually stands for Contract Lifecycle Management. So Again, the, this is a very traditional um, term in the Salesforce space. It's been around for a little while, right? Because as you know, any cust anybody who's trying to use Salesforce at some point, if they're actually uh, embracing sales cloud, they need to get a contract signed. And, and it's not always a, a straightaway signature. So there's sometimes the need for negotiation, redlining, workflow back and forth between internal and external parties. And that's what DocuSign CLM is, about, is all about. It's a, giving the people the ability to automate some of these manual tasks, um, to orchestrate really complex workflows, um, whether it's you know within Salesforce or even extending out to other enterprise apps, um, and also provides the ability to uh, really manage the data behind the agreements to help manage risk, whether it's audit trail type information, metadata, um, and other information like that about agreements, right? So this is the core foundational technology we're talking about today, DocuSign CLM. We will focus on how it works with Salesforce in our, in our session today. All right, and then bringing it into Salesforce, right? So now let's talk about it in that context really quick. Um, so um, as we know, Salesforce, specifically Sales Cloud, um, this is the life cycle of a typical opportunity um, in Salesforce, right? You, you create the opportunity, you may uh, use Salesforce Revenue Cloud for configuration, price, and quoting. Um, there is a standard contract record or object in Salesforce that lets you capture some contractual information. Um, and then that might extend out to order management. And then you have to amend the original contract and renew it, right? This is a lot of data about a customer that includes products, pricing, contracted pricing, et cetera. Um, but the other side of this is the the actual documents that need to be created, rather whether it's that first NDA when you first start to, uh, when you first create an opportunity, or um, it's a proposal, uh, right? You've you've built a quote in Salesforce. You want to generate a proposal. How do you do that? Um, you can use DocuSign CLM for that. Um, the actual MSA contract, the, the master agreement that needs to be created. That's another part of what you know our customers will use this for. And then post generation, there might be redlining, e-signature and a, a host of other actions that need to take place. But DocuSign is really focused on the documents and specifically the agreement documents that orbit the opportunity. Um, and then Salesforce, obviously we leverage as our system of record for all the opportunity management, uh, quoting and, and other things like that, right? Traditional account management, contact management, those things. So again, this kind of explains the complement between DocuSign, specifically DocuSign CLM and Salesforce Sales Cloud. And with that, we'll, we'll go into our demo. I hope that provided at least a baseline 
of what we're talking about today when it comes to our, our CLM product. Now we're gonna actually see it in action. We're gonna see the life cycle of an agreement from creation all the way to signature. But again, we'll have vignettes along the way that will articulate some of the potential, whether you're a developer um, and wanna use like a Salesforce trigger with our, with our product, or whether you wanna inject code into the workflow, um, or whether you wanna ad administer some of the workflow capabilities or some of the forms we provide for document generation. We'll be taking steps into that as we tell the end user journey as well. Yeah. Perfect. So let's dive right in. Okay, so um, here we are inside of Salesforce. Um, so again, we're trying to take the story right in the middle of things, right? Um, I right now am pretending to be this uh, this part, this individual, Michael Stanfield. Um, in the opportunity, we've created a few quotes, we've landed on some pricing, um, and we're at this point where we need to actually create an agreement for this customer to get them over the, the finish line, sign contract and close opportunity. And so to do that, I'm gonna click on generate master agreement, right? This is just a Salesforce button. There's a URL behind the Salesforce button. So it's, you know, you go to the object configurator, you create a new button, you put a URL behind it and that's all you really have to do. Um, but that URL or that button points you into what we call a document generation form. And so the document generation form allows the end user to actually generate that agreement. And you'll notice that on the form, we've actually actively pulled some data from the account, from the opportunity, from the related contact object. And if we go, if we drill deeper into this and we check this box, we've also pulled all the related opportunity products. So one of the things about DocuSign CLM is that it can actually uh, crawl all over the Salesforce data model, pull information from the account opportunity, you know, uh, related opportunity products, even quote, even custom objects. Um, and it can pull all that data into a single place, coalesce it or combine it and use it to generate an agreement with that information. But it also allows the user to actually interact with that experience. So I can tweak something like the payment terms here, or I can change the termination notice if I want to. Um, and as I make those changes, you'll notice that this will, this little help text will tell me, hey, um, standard terms are fine, don't require any additional approval. If I start changing this to like, you know, 60 days, this will require approval. Can you tell me why? And so this is interesting because what's happening, again, what's happening is a combination of data being pulled from Salesforce, user input, and some feedback on, on the follow up workflows that will happen. Um, and for those of you wondering, okay, this is a form, right? How configurable all the, are these things? What if I have this other data model or want to pull data from here or there? Let me just quickly step through something here. Actually, it was, all, it was there all along. Um, and I'll go from here. And so this is the admin experience inside of DocuSign uh, CLM. And so if I click on this, this will actually show, let me just click a few times. The admin, the admin view of that exact same form. So for example, we have the, um, the end user experience here where all the data has been pulled and then we have the configuration experience here, right? And so you'll notice that inside this form, we can rearrange elements if we need to. We can add new elements here if we need to. And if you have an element or a field that's being pulled from Salesforce, we actually allow you to drill down into, that, into the Salesforce data model multiple levels. So I kind of keep going and going and going if I need to all the way down here um, to pull something out, right? And we actually support uh, through the UI up to three levels of hierarchy from which you can pull data from. So again, the idea is if you start one of these events from an opportunity and you need to pull information from an object, you know, three layers down, you can. Um, if you have something even more complex than that, you can even do things like SQL queries, et cetera, to pull more data out of Salesforce. So just those are interesting things we can do in the solution. Um, but I, I just wanted to take a brief uh, pause here because everything we show in our demo today is configured through clicks, but it can be augmented via code, right? So again, if I was an administrator and I wasn't really a developer, I could add fields, I could drill through my data model if I wanted to. But if I want to edit some of this and what, what it, the behavior behind it and actually use JSON, you can do that right inside of this as well. So you have kind of both uh, capabilities there. Um, for expansion if needed. Okay, well, we'll squeeze that back up. We'll come back to admin in a second and we'll hit next. All right. Ernesto, 
sorry to interrupt mm -hmm. you, but we have a really, really good question coming up here. Um, so anonymous attendee, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Um, <laughs> it might be a silly question. I don't think it is. But is this compatible with the health, health clouds module in Salesforce to capture in office and offline signatures from patients? Um, yeah, I mean, because it uses DocuSign for signature, like DocuSign, as you know, um, there are abilities, there are capabilities for in-person signing and, you know, regular e-signature. Um, so anything that DocuSign can do from that perspective, you get with DocuSign CLM because ultimately this is part of building that ecosystem, right? Everything you know and love from DocuSign e-signature is still there, but now you have CLM on top of it. So if you need to pull data from Health Cloud and then and then actually, you know, to have the signature experience be a certain way because of, you know, what's going on, whether it has to be in person or not, you know, that journey is, is enabled because you have the collaboration between e-signature and CLM. Perfect. And sorry, we have another one here that is, is pertaining to what you just showed. Kat is wondering, mm -hmm. where do we use SOQL or SOQL queries to further customize? Yeah, so the I'll talk about it in a second, but awesome. it would it it would uh it would be done by workflow a little bit after this screen as well. So I'll I'll talk about it. I'll talk about workflow in general, but um, yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll speak to SQL queries because you can do it for a lot of reasons. Some of our customers do it for Doc Gen. Some of our customers should need to query certain objects for data as part of the workflow and get get some outcome. But we'll talk about how you can further query um, Salesforce um, in that way. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay, so what you're seeing here too is um, after the person says, yes, this is the document I want, the system's just telling them, well, this is the document you're going to get, here's a preview. And so I can actually click back and refine my data or my, my user input and hit next and save. So there's this ability to kind of toggle back and forth. Again, the, the end user experience is pretty straightforward. It's worth noting though, that this um, document generation in general, this capability to produce do a document. Um, and by the way, I'll show you where that document shows up here in a second. We actually have this little lighting component that comes in as part of the app exchange package. So all the outputs from DocuSign show up in this little component. So here's our MSA for Atlas that we just created a moment ago. But anyways, going back to my original point. So document generation, uh, can be done by end users like that. It can also be done um, remotely through the API. So whether you want to wire it up with a Salesforce trigger or have some other trigger, you can do that. Um, because as I was discussing a little bit earlier, everything from uh, you know the doc gen itself to workflow, as you'll see in a second, we actually have API for that. So you can actually do use our, our task API here it is doc, for a document generation action remotely and actually just feed us some XML and we'll generate a document with that XML. XML is the lifeblood of CLM. So if you could just send us XML, we can do everything from that, from generating documents to starting workflows. A little bit on workflows here in a second. I think that'll be where a lot of questions may be sparked, but um, I did want, again, I wanna kind of keep um, contrasting this. There's, we always build, almost every feature in three ways. One of them is end user driven. Another one is workflow and, and kind of clicks, not code driven, right? Still automation, but not necessarily development. And the third is, you know, for developers, right? Whether it's using our API or customizing JSON or writing a custom SQL query, like things like that can be brought into, into the fold um, for even more extension in the platform. Okay. So let's talk about what happens next. This is where it gets interesting. So the document gets created, great. You know, there's a lot of doc gen apps in Salesforce. We know that, right? So doc gen is important, but it's not the whole story. So here um, on the opportunity, we do see that the MSA for Atlas is here. There's a little descriptor that says agreement is out for external review. And I can actually open it up um, and then see if I look at the activity feed that it went out to our customer, Matt Hayes, to review. Now, keep in mind that the workflow we stepped through here is going to be very simple just, just for the sake of you know i don't i don't want the end user experience to dominate our demo today it's more about showing it and then talking about the technical elements behind the scenes but the document was created and then a workflow sends it to our customer for review the, cu the customer will now review on redline send it back in um, and then we'll send it out for signature pretty straightforward workflow as far as you know generation external internal and signature but it's nice to know that when you click on that document and open it in salesforce you can actually see 
some detailed information. You can see the document itself. You can see the stage as we're calling it here. You can see some metadata about the agreement as well. So you do get some information right from within um, Salesforce when you click on one uh, on this little um, widget here and you open up a document to check its status. And that's very useful for end users as well, just being able to check what things are. And so what I'll do is I'll just, I'll act again, I'll act as end users for a few steps and then we'll, we'll talk about workflows because then I'll, you know, this will really reveal some additional things that DocSend CLM is doing. So I'll switch over to Matt's. All right, so here's Matt, right? So this is our customer now, external party. Matt gets an email from DocuSign that says, hey, we'd like you to review it in agreements. Um, even sending things out for external review like I'm doing here, there's an actual API for that. So again, you can, you can get to all these things that I'm clicking through here through our API. Um, but the, the external party is going to be able to download the document just as you would expect, open it up in Microsoft Word, make some edits. And normally I don't show like the editing experience too much in Word because you would assume, well, you just hit download on a Word document and now you're editing a Word document. <laughs> like we, we understand that. Uh, but what I wanted to zero in on, this is important, is that we have these things, we leverage uh, content controls inside of MS Word. And all that really means is that we can leave behind these little trackers um, in the template. And so the template itself behind the scenes has um, some XML um, plain text tags in the document. And uh, we what that does is then allows us to leave behind trackers. So if someone changes the payment terms to 45 days or the termination notice also to 45 days, you'll notice we're capturing that. And the reason this is important is because we can then re import that information into Salesforce as a new, as a field update. We can drive workflow off of the updates to specific sections of documents. And for those of you thinking, well, what happens if they delete that merge tag, right? They, they're smart. They know this is a content control. They click remove content control. Um, we can actually hide the content control through our tagging system and even make the section um, uh, not deletable. So there's some additional functionality we can bring to bear to protect these Little uh, these little data trackers. Um, so I'm going to make those edits very simple. Click next and just upload in the now revised version. Next, all done. Finish. All right. So again, I'm just kind of stepping through the hops. Um, the initiator, the external party. And now we'll step through as the internal reviewer real quick, and then we'll take a step out again to workflow and, and, and trace our steps and see what this is, how the system is automating or facilitating some of this routing, right? Because the salesperson is happy because we're just sending things around to the right people, getting their feedback. Now it's now the document is awaiting internal review or legal review. So we're, we're kind of moving things along and the salesperson can just kind of watch it happen, right? So they're are happy that the process is moving along, but behind the scenes, we've done some configuration to enable this level of, uh, of automation. So we'll, let's just talk really briefly about, um, again, this persona, right? So right now we've switched, we switch hats and I'm switching hats very quickly, mostly because we don't have a ton of time to chat about this stuff today, but just also to, to, to drive home the point that there are multiple personas here. So as a legal user now that I'm pretending to be, um, I actually get a task assigned to me, and these tasks can show up inside of Salesforce, the Salesforce tasks. They can also be emails that you get, notification emails, or you can open up the right document, and if you're assigned, you can take the action. But you'll notice that the, out, the, the actual option for the action I can take as, a, as this reviewer is one of many. So I can say, hey, send back to the external party, send to finance for approval, choose the next set of reviewers on the fly, initiate signature, cancel the workflow, right? So this is all configuration. So as, a, as an administrator in CLM, you'd be able to define all the different outcomes of every single step um, to allow someone to route the document around the organization. And when you think about going beyond the signature and actually embracing CLM, CLM typically has a few key phases. The first phase is the collaboration phase where the document's just being routed everywhere, right? Legal, um, finance, customer, sales, et cetera. Um, and then at some point you're like, we're good, time for approvals, you go through approvals and then, and then you're good, you go to signature, you go to signature. So those phases can be um, very easily enabled within our, our solution. And they're very common for almost everyone who's building workflows in CLM. Um, you, we do offer other interesting things like you can just launch a compare in the app and we'll actually turn on track changes retroactively and show you the changes 
the external party, for example, in my example, didn't actually make those edits with track changes on, but because we have compare, we can check that box and, um, and compare the two versions. And you'll see here in a second that it'll show up. Just give that one more second. There it goes. And there they are, right? The two edits right there. So really nice ability for a reviewer to see what's going on in the document on the right, take actions on the left and take uh, and, and move on. All right, so like I promised, let's talk about what happened actually from a CLM perspective, right? From a workflow perspective. So inside a CLM, we have um, this idea of workflows, right? And workflows, again, get launched, get started by a variety of things. They can be launched via the API um, or they can be launched by an action happening in Salesforce, like a document gets created. Um, and we even include an activity feed so you can, if I click on, you know, this um, workflow that's running right now, you can see all the different steps the workflow took all the way up until it landed in legal review right now, right? So that you can kind of follow the green line, see where things are at. Now, this, this looks great from a process monitor perspective. And in fact, you can actually interrogate all the variables that the workflow knows about, like the opportunity ID, the opportunity value, all from here, and even see, you know, on the right-hand side, you know, what the latest update is right here. Um, how do these things actually get built? Well, we also have a full-on workflow designer, right? So this is not a designer view of that. This is the process monitor view of it, the designer view of it. Um, and inside of here, we have over a hundred pre-built steps, right? That you can drag and drop onto, up to, up, uh, onto the canvas, right? So if I wanted to add an update Salesforce step here, drag and drop it in, Go ahead and connect the arrow, do that, right? So now we have an update Salesforce step, right? And each step has, you know, configuration on the right-hand side. So we can actually, if we click on legal review, you can see all the different configuration points here from who gets assigned to the instructions they receive, the five options they have, outcomes of those options, even an email template that they would get. So you get to design all of this within the, within the actual workflow designer. But remember I said that, if you wanna go further, like there's usually tools to go further. Well, a simple example is imagine you need to create a Salesforce record, right? We actually have Salesforce um, uh, native steps. So you can, we call it sale, create Salesforce object, uh, a more accurate name may be create new Salesforce record, but it allows you to actually create or instantiate a new record of a certain object type. So I can say, hey, go create a new contract or contract record. Right, and the Salesforce object type is contract, and then fill in that contract with some key data as you when you created it. Right, and in fact, if I switch gears back to the opportunity and I refresh the entire page, we'll see that we actually created this contract object or record um, as a result of, of starting a DocuSign CLM workflow. And we even filled it in with a URL to the document, the opportunity, and some information and metadata about the actual contract, right? So we have this ability through DocuSign to actually update Salesforce and create new Salesforce data. Now, when you do that, as you know, Salesforce has, you know, formatting requirements for certain fields and things like that that we may have to translate. So what if, that's one of, the, one of the reasons why our customer might use our C-sharp expression editor, where you can actually use um, or actually write code to transform certain pieces of data or to get additional data. So whether you're evaluating information um, or you want to return a certain data type or certain data or format it in a certain way so that it can be exported to another system. You have the complete expression builder here, which lets you actually write C-sharp code within the workflow. Um, a lot of customers don't use this for like 90%. They're not constantly interacting with our expression editor, but we do have very clear use cases for this. Again, data transformation, string transformation for situations where you need to update other systems. Um, or update Salesforce is a very common reason this might happen. Um, okay, so again, I just wanted to quickly look at this, uh, at the workflow designer here to articulate what's happening behind the scenes when someone creates a contract um, inside of, of Salesforce and starts a DocuSign CLM workflow. Uh, this actually has things like versioning built in it, right? So you can actually version and selectively publish certain versions of the workflow. Uh, most of our customers um, have lower level environments where they configure and build these and they have higher level environments where they deploy them. It's usually like a Salesforce sandbox tied to a UAT environment CLM. And then there's a Salesforce prod to a CLM prod environment as well. So 
we understand there'd be like a flow to how you deploy these things. And we kind of support that, that journey for our admins and developers. Um, again, just trying to show what's going on behind the scenes. Um, going back to Salesforce ETL um, uh, and things like that. This is this is where you can actually query Salesforce at any time using any sorts of we have, we have any sorts of query types. We actually have a way for you to use a form. You can use what we call a configuration document, which is like an XML document, or you can use a configuration variable, which is like just running like a SQL query that. Uh, or some running code inside of inside of the workflow that lets you basically call out to to Salesforce and pull some data uh, back. And what it'll do is, when you're done doing that, it'll then store it in a variable in CLM, which in the CLM workflow, which you can then use to do something else downstream, right? Whatever that is. So it, it's interesting because this is basically a declarative, way, uh, like a visual way to build or develop an application, right? There's variables, there's steps. You can even do, you know, there's even things to like, you can do for loops in here if you want to. Um, uh, but uh, we also want to have a balance where it's not just all code. Um, there is a way to get a lot of the baseline things by just configuring through the workflow designer um, and then maybe injecting uh, code in certain places where it makes sense. Okay, so going back to um, what's going on over here in Salesforce, um, switching gears back to the opportunity. Let me just go back here. All right, um, well, all I'm gonna do then is I'm just gonna say, hey, you know, those edits are minor, not a big deal, right? Um, I'm just gonna say it's ready for signature, right? Initiate signature process, all good here. We do support all sorts of other tools in here. Like they can download the document for editing. They can make revisions. We can have a full tennis match, as I like to say, between the external party and us as we move the document back and forth. Um, we don't have to do that here, but that you know we would assume that in a real world example, there'd be a lot more negotiation. And so at this point, the document then moves into a more traditional DocuSign e-signature flow, where if we go back to our handy workflow, and if you look at it closely, right, the idea is that if they say, hey, initiate signature process, we'll move down here, we'll update some data, uh, update the contract record, and then we'll send for signature using DocuSign here, right? And so if I click into that right there, you'll then be able to see that we can even do things like use envelope templates. Um, if I open this up here, we can, we can turn on certain authentication types, right, as well, signer type, Back to that question earlier, there's in-person signer support here, things like that. So what you would consider traditional signature functionality, e-signature functionality can be preloaded in an automated way using DocuSign CLM. Even the signature list, who needs to actually, or the signer list, who actually needs to sign this. This can also be a variable, variables get populated by some evaluation. In fact, some of our customers We'll, we'll use a child workflow. And that's another thing we can do in here. They'll, they'll use a child workflow, which you can actually launch here. So parent workflows can have child workflows, just like a parent program can have a child program, right? And pull data out. Um, and they'll use one where they might go and authenticate with another system. Um, they might do this with Salesforce or they might go somewhere else and actually authenticate with another system and pull data from that system, store it in a variable, as well in workflow and then return all that data back up to the parent workflow. So if I wanted to go find my signer list, but that required that I interacted with another system and say, hey, here's the here's the parameters of this deal. Who should be the signers? You know, send me, I'll send you the data. You get that response back. You can then store it in a in, in variables and workflow and then pre-populate the signer uh, the signer list here with the data you got from the child workflow. So you do have this ability Again, not just to spawn child workflows, but also to reach out to other web services through a workflow to get more information um, and actually, um, you know, automatically assign who needs to sign things, approve things, or other actions that you may need. Great. All right. So let's go over to Matt, who now has, as you would expect, a DocuSign ready uh, envelope ready for signature. Um, if, if Matt declines here, by the way, just as an FYI, the workflow can handle the decline as an event. And you can say if they decline, right, to sign, just you know, go back to the legal user reviewer and keep going down that path. So I'm just signing the document there, pretty straightforward. 
Also, one thing about that is any any collect any information collected during the signature. So some of our customers will put in things like PO numbers or other things that people actually fill out and sign. So they fill out the data and the tags, and they also sign at the same time. We can consume that information back in CLM, make it part of the agreement's metadata, as well as update Salesforce fields with that data. Right. So just just so you know, um, additional capabilities with signature as well. All right, so we have a signed document. Your natural question might be like, well, where did that actually go? Like, where did the signed document go after it's been signed? Uh, well, it'll, it'll just be available right there inside of the Salesforce records. So we switch gears back to the opportunity or we refresh this. We now have the certificate and the actual agreement fully signed. The status has been updated to approve and signed. We can actually refresh the entire opportunity here. Um, and we'll see that the opportunity was automatically closed one, the contract status was moved to sign, um, both on the contract object as well as the opportunity object. So we've updated a bunch of data in Salesforce. So that goes back to, again, the story with DocuSign CLM in that it, it ingests information from Salesforce. It uses that to launch a workflow and generate documents. It then can push data back to Salesforce along the lines as the process executes. Um, but also as a conclusion kind of set of actions. And this workflow actually does more than that. It will update Salesforce. It'll also schedule reminders for renewals and things like that. Um, and even update the contract, the account record by telling it, hey, your master agreement record is now this new contract ID that we have. So now if someone looks at the parent account, they'd be able to see that the master agreement is 000447 with all the data in there, right? So that kind of feeds naturally into other stories. And very frequently with Salesforce, we'll work with the Revenue Cloud team to also help out with the billing story where you can use Salesforce billing, Salesforce Revenue Cloud, DocuSign CLM, Sales Cloud, all in conjunction to tell a complete story around any documents that need to get created along the way and orchestrate all those workflows as you go through that process. Okay, so that that at least um, concludes most of the content I have from a demo perspective. Uh, let me let me go really quickly back to our demo, our our deck here to just um, wrap up with a few more points. Oh, I, I guess you know before I do do that, um, I just wanted to come back over here, and this is this is something we will provide to the team, but. Again, the CLM API, not something we touched on a ton today because we wanted to keep things very tied to the Salesforce story. Um, but the CLM API is very important because again, if you have other journeys in Salesforce, they're maybe not user driven, like, hey, you create a renewal opportunity. And as a result of creating a renewal opportunity, you wanted to call our API to auto generate a renewal contract to go along with that opportunity. You could do that using the CLM API in Salesforce, right? Um, or you need to spawn a workflow or using XML from another system, or you need to generate a document and do that remotely again in an automated way using middleware, your own app and things like that. All the, all the things I talked about today, whether it was doc generation or actually creating workflows, um, those can all be done uh, through the CLM API. So I just wanted to go back to that and just uh, articulate that that is a big item um, for certain use cases and certain workflows. Okay. So we'll go ahead and resume here. All right, just again, some reminders for the team on what we showed today. Um, it wasn't, I didn't make a big point of it, but of course, single sign-on Salesforce DocuSign, that little widget, the little app on the opportunity, um, it is looking at a DocuSign instance or a doc, yeah, a DocuSign instance. And of course we didn't have to log in to see the little uh, widget, right? It was just, you logged in through your Salesforce identity. So of course, support single sign-on. We're not going to have to swivel chair at another app. Um, something else that you get is you can actually have very specific permissions that you borrow from Salesforce. So you, we can do something we call federated permissions, where if you have access to the record, you have access to the documents. If you don't, you don't. Uh, but you can also use things like Salesforce profiles to set certain permissions in DocuSign. Um, you saw how we had the repository, right, embedded into the widget, right, and into the record, right, so I can just go directly to that Salesforce, um, that Salesforce record and see the document. One thing to note, though, is you can also go directly to DocuSign CLM and see all the agreements you've executed from there. Um, uh, we saw, we talked, we covered a lot of, of the Salesforce-driven document generation, the, the metadata mappings from Salesforce and Salesforce integrated workflow steps. But it's key, again, to note that all this comes out of the box. This is just 
our app, right? So if you download the app exchange app and you wanted to play with all the things we talked about today, um, you know, if you were a customer um, or if you were a prospect and you want to understand how this all works, it's all just comes through the app exchange app that we have today. Okay. And then visually articulating the journey, right? So this is this is what we covered today uh, through demo. But I, again, I just want to rearticulate. You know, our our part of the Salesforce ecosystem, where um, we're an integral part of a lot of our customers' Salesforce implementations, and that when it comes time to generate a contract and do all the things you see here at the bottom, generation approvals, signature, storing the contract, um, that's where DocuSign comes in. Um, there is the potential as well to run artificial intelligence models on top of the agreements um, post execution if required and pre so for some of our customers, for example, instead of them. Um, instead of them generating agreements using Salesforce, they might do 90% third party paper right they get all a lot of the inbound agreements from their customers. Um, and so we do have the ability for you to run what we call again DocuSign analyzer to extract some information from that agreement. Um, or even after it's been, again, the other side of that is after it's been signed, if you want to run certain search queries that go way beyond OCR, and you want to look for topics in your agreements like force majeure, et cetera, like there are the, there is the ability for you to handle that um, through um, a functionality we call insight or a solution we call insight. Um, but again, just laying things out for the team to visualize or, or to summarize what we did today. And with that, um, we'll dive right into QA um, so that we can answer some of those questions. We have had tons of questions coming in. Okay, are you ready, Ernesto? Fire away. Okay, um, question from Deepa in regards to uh, configuration of fields. Uh, so on configured fields for the form, can the data be made to sync bi-directionally, i.e. anything that gets edited in the document can be synced to the fields in Salesforce. Yes, you would just have to add an update Salesforce step um, in the workflow that happens after the document gets created. All the, all the form data that you see um, on the form, and in fact, you can also hide fields so you can extract information through that form that you're not showing the end user, but you might need to collect like a object ID. But anyways, all the form data, um, automatically becomes workflow data. And so you could choose to do whatever you want with it, whether it's re-update Salesforce. Um, some of our customers will say, well, I don't want to just update Salesforce back. Like I, I, let's make sure we actually approve what you're proposing here. And if we internally approve it, then we'll update Salesforce with updated fields. So the answer, short answer to your question is yes, um, but there tends to be some nuance in some of our customers, how some of our customers do that and when. Okay, awesome. Another question we have is from Suresh. We have mm -hmm. a scenario. How can we start a process from DocuSign and end in Salesforce? Like sending a template from DocuSign and once we have response, we want to store that response in Salesforce. Yep, there's uh, tons of ways. One of the things you can do, um, there's, there's, an, there's a, we might have another session for this, but we have this functionality known as agreement actions which allows, if you're saying that you already have an e-signature template that you're using and you just wanna have it end up in Salesforce, then agreement actions is a great way to kind of retroactively do some of that where you can actually store it in CLM or store it or, or have some other automation so it ends up in Salesforce, that's one option. The other option is you can just kick off that uh, process that you have today using CLM um, and by that, by that its very nature, it would already be associated with that record from the very beginning. So depends on how you're doing it. If, again, if you already have an e-signature process somewhere else and you just want to end, have it end up in Salesforce, there's, there's a lot of ways to do that, whether it's agreement actions or other, there are other ways I'm sure to do that. Um, but if you wanted to embrace CLM as part of that journey, um, that you would just have probably a, a button that allows you to choose a template in, on the record. And then when you do that, it kicks off signature and then the, the signed document ends up on that record. Awesome. We also have a follow up from Suresh and uh, generate master agreements if we have to send a uh, country specific agreements, is it possible like a different document for each country. That's a that's a fantastic question it's almost a question I, I wish people would ask me actually so it's a great question. Suresh. So uh, the answer is yes, absolutely, and, and in fact, one of the things I can talk about today uh, that's really interesting is you could do that in an automated way where. 
basically when you kick off a doc gen event, we can read some of the context in Salesforce. So in your example, if you had like a country field on the account or on the opportunity, and you wanted us to look at that and just generate the right template because country equals X, we could do that without even asking the user a question, um, which is super powerful. And then we've also done something similar for organizations that have multiple entities. And they're basically saying like, you know, if it lets fictional organization Atlas, right? If it's from Atlas LLC, then we use this MSA. If we're selling from Atlas Europe, right? Then it's this MSA, right? We can use some information from Salesforce to glean what entity you're selling from and choose the right template. Or sometimes it's just modifying a clause or a set of clauses in, in a single template um, based off of the entity. So it could be as, as different as fast as switching out the template, or it could be as simple as modifying text in the same template based off of country and or entity or any other combination of, of, of contextual information. Cool. Yeah. Uh, we've got another another answer or another question, should I say here, does an Office 365 license uh, is an I is blah, blah, blah. I'll go again. Is an <laughs> Office 365 license required for editing the doc or is it provided out of the box? Yeah, so um, editing the document is, it is a Word document. So you could just download it, edit it in whatever Word document editor you have. And there are more than, you can do that in more than just a Word. For example, you can do it in Google Docs. So if you wanna edit it, you can just download it, edit it, and then check it back in as a new version. For those that do have Office 365, um, an additional piece of functionality you get is in-browser editing. So you can actually, you know, fire it up in, in, in 365 from CLM and we'll actually store the document in CLM while this is happening still, but overlay the word online UI. And then you can invite others in to edit and you can have basically real-time editing in the browser. But if you don't have that and you just wanna download the word doc, edit and upload it, that's fine too. Cool. Anthony has a question. For documents sent out for final signature, is there a way to add a reviewer or approval step that allows a manager uh, the capability to review and approve the doc signed before they are routed to their final destination. Yes, um, I omitted that from our demo, mostly due to time constraints, but absolutely. Um, and that's very frequent, right? You you have the review step and then you have approvals, one or many parallel or serial, whatever needs to happen. And then there's signature that happens after that. So the answer is yes. Okay, so we have a Kind of question, kind of comment from Cash. Hi, Kat. Lovely, lovely to see you on here again. C Sharp expression uh, expression editor is amazing. I'd love to see a CLM cookbook with common uses for various code snippets. Um, do you think that's uh, in the? I I know I have some insider information. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to share it, but there. Do you have any insider that you can share? Any insider info? Uh, is there? So the uh, the answer the question is: Is there like a common task snippet library, or like you said, cookbook of C-sharp expressions that people use to do a lot of things. There Correct. definitely is, I, I know our I know our PS team uses it, um, uh, but I'd have to check to see like, you know, whether there's a, a version of it that's more approachable from a customer perspective. But we use our own tools to build, you know, our internal team uses our own tools to build workflows for customers. So you could imagine they've built tools for themselves, um, including very common actions. like. Like what I just described, where I transformed date to a Salesforce date, um, kind of uh, so that it could be accepted as a field update. That's like super common. People do that all the time. Um, so um, those kind of things, and then other more advanced things from even creating an entire CSV file or um, using C sharp for certain use cases. Like there's there's a spectrum there, but uh, that's a good follow up. Um, I could Lauren, I, we could follow up on that. Yep, most definitely. I have Kat's contact details. I'm also cool. going to say we eat our own cooking. That's what I love to say. We do actually eat our own cooking. We use all our DocuSign <laughs> products internally. So yeah, we probably yeah. do have a cookbook somewhere. So uh, Kat, I'll reach out yeah. separately to you. Yeah. Um, next question we have is from Deepa again. What are some of the metrics we can report off uh, off of the workflows and the data from DocuSign? For example, cycle time, number of edits, dates, like the first signature, second signature, fully signed date, et cetera. Yeah, um, actually all of the above because the workflow actually has um, native, we have a native workflow report and we have a, a few, some of them are like summary 
based, right? Like I want to see like this workflow, how many times does it run and where is my, where's the bottleneck? And then we have detailed workflow reports that can break it down by step, you know, what took the longest or what was there. And then you can overlay, um, you can actually overlay agreement metadata. So sometimes you can, if some customers are hunting things down, like, okay, when we use clause A, how long did the workflow take to complete on average when we, when we swapped it out for clause B, which is the same clause, just option A, option B, did that impact anything? Um, and so you get very granular. Um, you can also just get a general understanding. And because this is important, you get to define the stages, the stage names in the workflow, like your workflow might have 10, 10 stages, right? Legal review, finance review, however many stages, it might have three stages because it's just an NDA. You get to define that. Um, so, you know, that, that all influences the way the report looks, but at the end of the day, yes, cycle times, um, agreement attributes, all sorts of things can be reported on. Um, so you can really customize the already out of the box, uh, workflow reports that you get in the system. I certainly hope there isn't a, how long does it take Lauren to sign a document report in our system? Because I am <laughs> terrible at it. Um, Melissa can vouch for me on that. I am terrible at getting back to people sometimes. So if I do owe you an email, I'm sorry if anyone's on this call. <laughs> um, but with that, that's all the questions we have at the moment. Um, so thank you very much for uh, popping on here. Ernesto, if you could go to the next slide, I like to do a visual. Um, so we have a ton of developer resources for everyone and anyone to use. We have a developer center um, that you can get all your SDKs or software development kits. Um, you can get a whole lot of code, um, how to's, etc. like soap and um, all that kind of fun stuff. If you have a question, a technical question, you can go on to Stack Overflow. Please make sure you tag us as DocuSign API, myself and my whole team. Um, go in there and we answer questions for everyone to make sure you know you're getting the good information and a timely response. There is the support center where you have a whole list of documentation and DocuSign University, this is one I love to champion quite a good bit. Uh, DocuSign University is completely free. It's self-paced learning courses. Um, you don't even need to be a DocuSign customer to utilize this. You can use a Gmail account, a Hotmail account. If you're still on AOL, we do not judge. So feel free to go over to DocuSign University. We have developer blogs where you get to all the latest information and there's newsletters and stuff like that on there. YouTube, we are, this video will actually be recorded and put on YouTube. So we have a whole list of uh, webinars, how to documents, uh, how to videos, should I say, and some deep dives into our products. Um, this is DocuSign e-signature for Salesforce week. Yay! Um, so we have another session a little later on today. I think I have an hour break in between. So we have another session learning to implement Salesforce OAuth in DocuSign. That's in one hour's time. Um, feel free to go on to the website events.docusign.com forward slash TDX 2021 and reserve your space there. We also have a DocuSign for Salesforce meetup tomorrow. It's basically a chilled out version where you can just get to chat and network with the folks that are currently on here if you want to come. Um, we have an agreement cloud customer 360 that is being provided by our product manager. Um, there's also an e-signature for Salesforce's best practice and tips. That is my session. So feel free to come over and say hello to me again. And then we have five tips to speed up the revenue cycle with DocuSign for Salesforce. We also have API office hours, live from the trenches, which is live coding, and an e-signature for Salesforce meetup again on July 21st. Um, we also have partner resources. There will be a survey that's sent out after this meeting. Please do fill it out. I love reading the feedback. I read every bit of feedback that comes back to me and it helps me tailor make these sessions for everyone so that you get the best out of DocuSign for Salesforce and me, your cruise director is on point with giving and delivering these sessions for you. So with that, I think that's everything. I wanna say a massive thank you to Ernesto. I learned so much on this session. I, I, I've been wowed. Thank you so much for, for presenting for us today. Awesome, thank you for having me, Lauren. And, and I had a great time uh, just presenting to the team and to everyone on, on the webinar. So thanks everyone. Awesome. With that. I hopefully will see you in one hour's time.